So uh, welcome to this webinar on uh, developing and deploying analytics for IoT or enterprise systems. My name is Amit Doshi. I work as a senior application engineer um, at MathWorks India. So uh, I mean, since you are here, you already know that analytics is kind of everywhere. So in, in this uh, webinar of 50 odd minutes, this is what you're going to learn. We'll, we'll uh, talk about fundamentals of analytics, what it is, where it is getting used, why now, right? Uh, I mean, you know, we, we hear this, uh, this, this term um, every now and then, so there should be a reason for it. Uh, most importantly, how you can get started with data analytics. We'll also talk about concepts of machine learning, IoT, and most important, deploying this analytics to the cloud or your embedded devices, correct? And we'll leave you uh, towards then giving you a few useful links and material on which you can start learning further. And of course, my, my coordinates so you can reach back to me, okay? Side note, you don't have to be a programmer or a mathematician to understand the concepts. Okay, uh, a few additional um, logistic related details, few requests. Please keep yourself muted throughout this presentation. Really appreciate that. Secondly, I encourage you to please send in your questions in the questions tab and uh, towards the end, I'll try to answer most of the questions when I can. Okay, let's get started. So uh, analytics, of course IoT or enterprise system is where your algorithms or analytics runs, but let's first understand what is analytics. With the definition of Gartner, Gartner, if, if, if you know, is the largest um, IT um, um, uh, leading research and advisory company. So according to them, they say that turning large volumes of complex data into actionable information. So I've highlighted data and actionable information, right? Let me show you this with an example. And I bet all of you know this. Okay, this is uh, one of the e-commerce examples. And what these e-commerce guys are doing is getting your information, business data, transaction, what you have searched, what you have browsed, right? What you have bought, what's the location? And they have been predicting models to give you best offers. Now there is a changing trend that they're also doing a bit of image processing. So of course, looking at the engineering data and using these images as few features to improve the model, correct? And then you see when you open any of the uh, browser, you would see that, okay, more top picks for you and you will see those uh, sometimes till you buy the item, correct? So again here, what's happening, coming back to our definition, these guys are treating data developing a model and it is suggesting an action. Let me give you an, another example. So we understand that it's not, you no, know, there's hardly an industry which is an exception to data analytics. Look here, um, there is uh, one, one uh, famous truck company called, uh, truck manufacturer called Scania and uh, it is, or uh, they had gathered image data, video data, as well as sensor data. Their goal was to apply brakes automatically. Now what's analytics here? What they're doing is, or what they have done, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, this is already a completed case and I'm gonna show this, this in live in a minute. So they had processed around 80 terabytes of data, developed predict predictive models, and those models were running on the truck, okay? So what you're gonna see now is that a truck will come from this side. Looking at the object, it's gonna stop, stop automatically. Right? So this is another type of analytics where human 
are no more requested to take an action. The system or analytics or the algorithm itself is taking an action, in this case applying breaks. Right? So we saw two cases. First case, the algorithm was suggesting what to buy, where in this case, algorithm is taking action. So if you go back to this particular chart, you know, these are called four types of analytics and organizations, they're taking extra efforts, shifting them from traditional BI that addresses descriptive analysis, kind of, you know, dealing only with what happened case to advanced analytics where they're looking at or asking questions, why did it happen? What will happen? What should I do? Correct? All right, so we, we talked about what is analytics. We also looked at few cases. Let's look at why everyone is talking about analytics now. And to me, there are three strong reasons. First, we have now access to enormous amount of data, okay? Both business data as well as engineering data. We also have enough compute power. We have desktop cores. Even our mobiles have eight cores, right? So many cores, GPUs, clusters, cloud, Hadoop, right? So we have now compute power which can tackle the big data which is getting generated. And of course, last but not the least, machine learning algorithms. Now these are not new, but these are getting used along with big data and compute power to come up with an algorithm. To me, these are three pillars or building blocks of data analytics. Okay, so uh, generic workflow, okay? As we know that this is, this is all about us, end users, who wanna take wise decisions. Now, wise decisions not based on gut feeling, but about you know, using data. So uh, that's where data analytics comes in handy or comes in picture. And now we know that data analytics run either directly on cloud or enterprise system, or it could be running directly on your embedded devices in the IoT world. They also call edge nodes, correct? So uh, what are these four stages to de develop algorithm and put in either enterprise systems or embedded devices or both? Okay, we're gonna see another case there. We're gonna, we're gonna use both uh, a cloud aggregator and an embedded device. So it all starts with accessing data. Data could be historical data. Data could be coming directly from sensors. The second most important step is working with messy data, you know, raw data. We pre-process it, we maybe transform, get only useful information or columns or we call features which really matter to our model. Third stage is develop the model. And of course, you know, uh, we need to validate the model before we deploy or integrate that with analytics. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, uh, you know, show you two cases. Okay. And this is, uh, these will be, uh, really informative to you. I mean, you know, you can learn from these cases how you can start developing your analytics. Uh, very, very simple, but a disclaimer here is that follow the workflow, okay, then that of example. So what we have in a first case, this is uh, like Uber or Ola, okay? So how these taxi providers predict the cost of taxi ride? Once this model is available and deployed, it is maybe running on a web server, and you as end user access this from mobile. Most important, many people are accessing the, the same model with their inputs simultaneously. So how to come to this particular model? That's my case number one. Case number two, kind of simplified version of smart traffic monitoring. Uh, it has IoT flavor, and this is, uh, I'm gonna, you know, uh, kind of spend uh, only a few minutes. It has IoT flavor to it, but you will definitely know uh, what is the workflow there, and uh, uh, it's also not very different, even if IoT is, uh, people consider it's a different field, okay? So, uh, a bit more about the first example. We have here uh, around 
21 GB of data. It's New York City taxi data. Um, we're going to follow all the four stages. We're going to access this data from a website. Okay. Pre-process, explore the data, get only re relevant features, then develop and validate the model. And look here, most important, we're going to work on subset of data for prototyping and then run the entire model on Spark enabled Hadoop cluster. Okay, with the full data. Once this is done, once we have the model, we'll also show you how to integrate this analytics into a web app. So see here, I've highlighted these words, data from website, app or analytics into a web, web app. Okay, so how does this look? Let me give you a teaser. See here, this is, uh, this is how MATLAB looks like. We are setting a Spark job setting an environment. So here we are saying this is this is, is going to run on a Spark Hadoop. Uh, this is the location. That's about it. So starting a Spark job on Hadoop cluster, processing around 21 GB of data. And as you know, it might take time. I got the output. So this is our linear model. It has taken 12 minutes to come up with a model. This is not done yet. This is only the first three stages. What next? Web app. Okay, so again it's a simplified version and this exactly will run on any web browser. So any device which has internet connection and with your own inputs. So starting with uh, embossed building to destination uh, like Vadia Airport and the fare prediction is $27 and I confirm this with one of my friends who built it. It's pretty reasonable. Okay, so this is the first example, getting data from website and then uh, building an analytics and integrating that to a web app. Second example, which has IoT flavor, what we're going to do is, you see here, so a, an edge node or sensor, in this case camera, is connected to a Raspberry Pi. It is continuously monitoring the traffic and only sending the information on the cloud, okay? So um, what you see here is towards the end only the traffic count. And this information might be used to further develop a smart signal sen uh, you know, system. So um, that's about it. Let's, let's uh, look in more in detail. This is just for people who have never used or heard of MATLAB. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use MATLAB to walk you through these two examples. So MATLAB, which stands for Metrics Laboratory, it's a high level language which has pre-built algorithms and apps for doing data mining, machine learning, data exploration, big data exploration, of course, and converting those to work with other platforms or other languages. It's a product of MathWorks and it has a history of good 33 years. Okay, it's not new. MATLAB has over 2 million users across industry and academia. Okay, that's a brief introduction for folks who have never heard about MATLAB. All right, so let's talk about, or let's, let's get back to our four-stage workflow, and this is gonna be one of your key takeaways for building blocks or stages of data analytics. So first two stage, stages. Accessing data, pre-processing it. Now, if we, you know, uh, there was an interesting article by by Forbes, and uh, it says that data scientists they spend around 80% of their time in cleaning or accessing data and cleaning it. Clubbing, they call it data preparation. Okay, and that's right. I also work with many uh, customers, and we often hear that data is coming from different sources, data is, you know, the type itself is different. Sometimes it's text, sometimes it's images. You need to spend a lot of time and use different techniques for cleaning it up. Many times data itself is missing, correct? So uh, let's, let's look at how we can, I mean, look at these challenges and let's try to address those. So big data access and pre-processing. Now in this case, our data, as I said, or mentioned, it, it is um, available on website. 
okay and you can also try it out it's open data uh, this is again you know many 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 of our audience they ask question that uh, can I give a shot at openly available data and this is openly available data this is as I said it's around 21.3 GB or precisely now what we're gonna do is get this data inside MATLAB or even first in, in computer right there are two ways to go about it first right click on a particular file and save it save as and you can do it for all 12 months if it is three years you'll be doing it 36 times the same activity smarter way use a for loop okay and MATLAB is, has this particular you know command called web save so you will be doing this activity automatically so you'll be writing these three lines of code this is the URL and I'll be doing this activity for one year so 12 times I don't know whether you have noticed there's also something called par so you have added parallel so this activity can be done in parallel because you know downloading one file and another file there is no dependency as such so these things can be done in parallel and this is inbuilt in MATLAB okay so this is a key takeaway for you, you can download data save time at the same time um, you know uh, processing will happen in parallel all right let's say you have this data available in 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 MATLAB and this is how you know uh, MATLAB looks like so to get one file in data in MATLAB it's just drag and drop it gives you access to you know all the uh, columns or observations you can decide you know uh, whether whether it is you know um, it has any uh, missing data or unimportable sales you can convert those right there instead of getting data inside any tool and then cleaning it's better to actually do this activity if it is possible while importing itself that's it and you clicked on this little little guy here green mark and what you see here in in the workspace which, which I call personally MATLAB train you have this taxi data which has 157,000 observations just drag and drop that's about it okay all right but you know we said that accessing big data in this case it's a single file which can easily fit in my memory and when I'm saying memory here it's RAM okay what about if I have huge data so if, if I combine you know multiple files 21 GB you know it definitely cannot fit in my memory or in my RAM compressed RAM so a better way we introduce something called data store so what data store does is that it establishes a link between location and MATLAB that's about it by itself it is not reading the data what it does is that gives you preview of first eight observations and then you're very sure that what you're accessing is right or wrong okay so in this case it is saying that it has uh, eight rows and 19 different columns okay well I assumed in this case or in my case I had downloaded this, uh, this data on my local drive but what if the data is on Hadoop okay all right you can you can follow the same process except you just do one small change you set the environment to Hadoop that's about it again data store and the location give the location hit enter and you get access to entire you know location it has various different properties and you see in this case uh, this location has 48 files I can look at the properties I see all the 48 names there we can work on what should be the type whether it's a category whether the column is um, a date time okay so you can work and specify while you are creating or establishing this connection as I, I, I repeat okay instead of importing data as it is and then cleaning is there a smarter way to get only relevant data or clean data as much as possible and data store properties makes it possible okay another case just for completeness if the data is available on a SQL database process is again same 
In this case, I'm making connection to the database and then I'm using database data store. Okay, so data store is gonna be your good friend. Now I'm gonna give you these links and references. You can le learn more about it after the session as well. So there is documentation from MathWorks which talks about concepts as well. What is data store, how to get started. And here it talks about what types of data it supports. Okay, in a summary, in a nutshell, MATLAB can access data either from servers databases or directly from hardware sensors. Or if you have written something in a written code in other, other languages, you can access that as well. Business data as well as engineering data. Okay, all right, access part done. Now, processing big data. Now, um, there is a new array called tall array. And what it does is that it processes entire data. So it's, it's, it's kind of wrapper around your data store. Okay, it's gonna divide the whole data into multiple chunks and very, uh, I mean you can decide what is the chunk size. So um, if you have access to uh, parallel computing, you can very well do this activity in parallel and this is uh, built-in support which is possible. Okay, um, so let me show this in action. So what we're doing, we have already created data store here. I'm just saying that tall and the data store. And as you see, it again gives me access or preview of only first eight observations. Okay, so um, if you go here, I'm using few functions which are called R and minutes. And I get access to these functions when I have defined that as a date time array you can define a particular column as date time and then you can use these functions. It really becomes very handy. So what we are doing is we are just getting hour of the day and trip duration. So we have added these two. Now you see uh, we're calculating mean and you're gonna see a question mark. Now why, why question mark? Question mark because MATLAB has not yet evaluated you know, has not done the meal calculation because it's huge data and it is it is designed, there is no error asset, it is designed to do or run in this particular fashion. So what it, it does, it keeps all these uh, instructions kind of piled in and when you use command call gather, it will run optimally on the entire data set. If you use it nicely, it will definitely help you to increase or boost up your performance. All right, so it will try to see how easily with minimum number of passes, you see here, one pass is required because it's only one function, but what if, if you have multiple functions? So it, it is gonna try to reduce those passes by which it's gonna save time, okay? All right, so as I said, best practice, just keep adding those functions. It won't be executed direct or evaluated on the main data, but it won't give you error. And when you say gather in one single shot, it will run all those functions. Okay, so let's say we have now our mean standard deviation and height. Height is again a very excellent function which is appreciated by, by um, our users. So see, we got answer and it has um, 157,000 readings. Okay, now once we have access to data, instead of looking at numbers, I personally like looking at visualizations. So again, visualizing big data is a challenge and we have another plot which is available which works very well with tall arrays it's called bin scatter plot okay what it does is that looks at the huge data and represents these data points with few bins what you see here on right hand side is a gamma it's a scalar factor so if you decrease it okay it will also show you 
uh, bin counts which has minimum numbers and you see that here if I just pause for a second I have few readings at this particular point as well as this side okay and um, I can easily say that it's anomalous because uh, it is saying it's it's trip fair right and here it's distance so trip uh, trip fair cannot be seven thousand dollars that's kind of insane so what we do is we use logical indexing and say that give me distance you know uh, above one one mile this is US data right my maximum fair amount I'm considering for my data is 1000 and this is what you're doing pre-processing and this definitely comes with domain expertise what really matters to your data what really matters to your model okay we have cleaned the data again logical indexing works at, as it is you know with, with big data using tall so tall makes the work really easy when it you know when we are in processing huge data so what it is doing is again you know after cleaning that data let's see whether we have any trend and uh, well we see a trend here if I just also look at uh, bins which has less number of sample uh, I see there is kind of you know trend here so as distance increases fair amount also increases but what is this so if my Y is fair amount now we are asking questions of playing detective what is this particular part fair amount distance is increasing this is distance sorry did not put the labels this is distance and this is trip amount okay this is dollar so this you know trip amount is same and distance is kind of increasing why is it anomaly should we remove that well again domain expertise or understanding of data uh, source of data will really help so in this case this is a flat rate which is charged in the US for um, airport drops so it doesn't make sense to remove that data we can we will keep the data okay so this is how you decide what is an anomaly what is not an anomaly before you actually even start you know uh, building a model okay so what we do now is that we go forward and then also try um, histogram let's see uh, what distance we have so histogram is again another uh, visualization uh, which works very well with tall or big data and we are saying here is that uh, our most of the trip distance are between four to uh, three to four kilometers right and here again you see those anomalies or humps we decide whether we should keep it or not and of course these these two humps represent two different airports okay so we'll keep it okay so um, that that was quick quickly on on pre-processing data data exploration and we looked at how you can visualize huge data sets if you want to learn more your old good friend documentation go there there are a few nice articles here for example in this case I'm showing you uh, article talks about how do you clean messy and missing data and most important it also has you know a script so or example which you can try without MATLAB in your browser okay so this is how it looks when I click on try this example it just opens the live script as if you you are seeing that in MATLAB and this is this is how MATLAB script looks like okay I can go ahead and run or execute the entire script so uh, I mean point here is uh, how easily how, what's your learning curve and documentation really helps in reducing this particular learning curve so what we have seen so far is bin scatter plot uh, our histogram also we looked at it and we also then the script goes ahead and sees okay whether these um, predictors are really important ones for my model and we do uh, logical indexing to filter the data and get data of 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 our, our interest okay I'll encourage you to look at these functions called is missing really helpful really saves a lot of time
Now uh, we also talk in pre-processing stage a lot about uh, feature selection, feature transformation. Sometimes you have uh, you know 200 features. So how do you reduce the dimensionality by which you will you know reduce complexity of the model? So uh, again, there are really good conceptual you know uh, uh, help topics are available. For example, principal component analysis. When you click, you'll get into it. So uh, uh, I'll encourage read more about this. Um, future transform transformations uh, in our documentation. Okay, uh, moving on. So what we have seen so far is that uh, these were few challenges, data aggregation, cleanup, and uh, point and click tools to access variety of data source, uh, tall arrays, which can help you to access really big data. And we did not talk much about uh, image data or sensor data, but they, again, there are apps which help you to access and pre-process these, uh, these data sets very easily. My first key takeaway is MATLAB makes it easy to work with business and engineering data. Second, once we have pre-processed data, comes the part of developing predictive models. Okay, now um, most of you might be already aware that um, machine learning, you know, which kind of various different algorithms are there and machine learning really comes in handy because uh, data itself is uh, too complex. So we don't know really the governing equation, okay, what has effect on our output. So that's where machine learning uh, comes, comes in the picture. So generally there are two types of learning, supervised, where we already know what we are looking at and unsupervised, we just get access to huge data and then we need to uh, you know, discover patterns or hidden information. Supervised then can be further divided into classification where the output is discrete, whereas uh, regression is where the output is continuous. For example, if you're predicting you know, load forecast, so load will continuously vary with respect to time. Right, and classification it could be uh, you know, healthy patient, unhealthy patient, healthy engine, unhealthy engine. Okay, species of dogs. So discrete, uh, that's where classification comes in picture. So, um, and there are various different, you know, methods or algorithms. As I said, these are not new. Many of these are not new. Those were always available. So question comes, I mean, when I started looking into machine learning, these were a few questions which came to my mind. You know, there's so many different models. Which model should I choose? Do I need to write my own machine learning, machine learning algorithms? How do I compare various models? Because, you know, when we talk to customers, the, the model varies with, with respect to data. You know, even if there's slight change in data, one, two parameters added, model could be, approach should, could be totally different. So, uh, you know, how we need to try out various different models. One size doesn't fit all. So after, kind of using or trying out various different models, how do we compare those? That's again, very important step before we fix on a particular algorithm. And uh, last part, once we have a model, how do we take it and uh, use it on new data? So um, I really like this particular app. So MATLAB comes with few apps, like your mobile apps, uh, graphical user interfaces, and you can do a lot of interactive work without actually uh, programming anything. So this is a different example, but just showcasing you, because we are not doing any classification in this case. Uh, in New York Taxi, we are doing regression, but for just for a demo purpose. So here, when you open this app, you get access to your data, you can select what is predictor, what is a response, and uh, you, can, uh, you can choose uh, how much you want to keep. So for example, I just go back for a second. So you can, you, can, you can decide if it is large data, I can manually decide, okay, keep 25%, 25% for um, training and remaining 75% for testing. I'm, I'm sorry, the other way around. 75% for, for uh, training. So if if um, data size is not really big, then can get into enfold kind of cost validation. And if you don't understand what it is, the app also has help topics. Read about validation. How do you select data? How do you divide data? Okay. Once you do that, the next challenge comes. Okay. Or uh, which model to start with? 
and uh, you get access of course you don't need to write your algorithms all these algorithms are available on button click but again if I or you don't know which algorithm to start with nothing to worry you can try all right because computer will be doing it for you so I can click on try all and this is again is happening in parallel I already talked about downloading data in parallel again in this case there is, there is no dependency while I'm you know training two different models so I can do this activity in parallel okay and in, and it, it, it says that okay KNN works best for this kind of data now you can very well go ahead and uh, you know look at validation so there are various uh, matrices confusion matrix which I like and ROC curve uh, so it, it then compares with true class and predicted class once you're happy you can go ahead and generate code this is all simple I mean there, there is a reference from one of our customers he said that um, you know he was in his mid career and if this app was not there he would not have even touched machine learning okay so uh, apps make life really easy there is another app which is which is really brand new and uh, which also works for regression okay uh, again point and click we can uh, try out various different models and uh, towards the end once you're happy with a particular model you can share the code with trained model uh, uh, share the code and um, you know run um, run on new data okay uh, these these were just two but there are few other apps which make our life very easy you know it could be for sensor analysis it could be neural network you know many of you or we we, uh, we used must have used uh, a neural network so um, there is also an app and uh, the diagram itself um, is kind of self self explanatory where you can uh, interactively select hidden layers and uh, see how it is behaving okay performing all right so uh, we also okay this this is again important I mean uh, most of us when we go through forums there are, there are questions asked often that are there any algorithms machine learning algorithms which work with big data and um, this is kind of answering that question there are so many algorithms which work machine learning algorithms which work with big data so coming back to our 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 model or our uh, our example what we're doing is uh, instead of using an app I just wanted to show you there is uh, you know programmatic way as well so here we are doing using, uh, using command called CV partition which is dividing data you know um, into training and testing or training and validation and um, then we are fitting you know a linear model um, which has R of the day and trip distance and trip minutes these are kind of um, uh, predictors to it in this case as I said I'm using local machine okay and it's it's using subset of data and we get you know um, kind of good um, R square values which is 0.9 now if we another way to look at it um, graphically um, it, you see residuals uh, most of it it's around um, zero so model is kind of doing very well okay uh, now we, we looked at you know these uh, cases we uh, many of the times you know what we also hear is that all right we did prototyping okay but what about if, if you have 400 different um, uh, parameters how do we select those is there a better way okay and uh, second problem which which we often hear is that you have let's say you have trained a machine learning model but can I can I know or how do I make it sure that the model what I have got is the best for that kind of data all right and for that we have solutions so for 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 um, feature selection we have implemented neighborhood component analysis and see and it works both on regression and classification whereas for um, uh, for uh, you know um, knowing the best model we have hyper tuning hyper parameter tuning so essentially what it does is uh, it optimizes the hyper parameters 
Now, if we uh, look at programmatical view of running an SVM, you have these uh, standardized true kernel function, box constraint. These are kind of hyperparameters. Uh, and of course, you know, as a beginner, you can go with default and it will work. But if you want to get more control of it and really want to make it sure that what you have, the model what you have is really tuned well, not, not overfitting and generalizes well with the data, then what you can do is, what you need to do is you need to tweak these parameters. And uh, when you're going to tweak these parameters, you might need to try various different combinations of it. Now that process is time consuming. Okay, so we have something called auto um, hyperparameters optimization. And essentially what it is doing is it is uh, using Bayesian optimization internally. Okay, so it is trying out various different combinations and automatically you know, giving you a model which works the best, model parameters in this case. So uh, let's see this in action. So here we are running um, a, a model and every single iteration what you see, it is trying out various different, you know, hyperparameters. So all these blue dots, it's one single machine learning model and it is trying out you know multiple different combinations and gonna give you uh, the best possible option in reasonable amount of time so that we also have optimized for example a particular hyperparameter if you're tuning for long and it is taking a lot of time okay it just you know says stop and then um, works on on the further parameters okay so I'll encourage you again if you want to learn more about it go ahead and uh, um, read out documentation. It talks about Bayesian optimization workflow. Uh, again, if you don't have a program, there is a sample program which is available. Open the script, try it out. Okay, that's what you need to do. All right, going back. So as I said, we had developed this um, uh, linear regression model and uh, we had used it on subset of data. And as I had already shown you, that uh, we wanted to utilize all the data and we wanted to run this job um, on, on Spark Hadoop, Spark, uh, Spark enabled Hadoop. So process is again very easy. Uh, the tall works so you can interactively use, uh, you know, a tall and, and Hadoop. You can submit job just by setting environment and you can also play around with the number of workers. Uh, documentation is again self-explanatory. If you want to uh, get into lower level languages, you can use compiler option where MATLAB kind of can sit on the cluster. Okay, so there, there are two approaches, interactive way and kind of deployment. So if you wanna know more about it, just drop me an email or you know you can search in the documentation as well. So this is what we had seen this particular demo in action. You set this environment and uh, tell uh, MATLAB where it is using data store we are giving the location and running the same model what we had uh, are, are trained in this case and um, it takes around 12 minutes to give you an accuracy. Now um, initially I showed you that this particular app uh, so once the model was trained we wanted to integrate it with a web app so how is that how is that happening? The process is as follows. You'll be using MATLAB and MATLAB then algorithm can be converted into any of these file formats, okay? So it could be Excel macro, it could be Spark Hadoop, it could be um, C++ code, Java, Python, so uh, DLL, right, or JAR file. It could, you can just take the code and convert that into embedded C, which can directly run on your Android phone or uh, uh, other embedded devices. So this option makes it really easy. I mean, this was, uh, people like this particular workflow that, all right, MATLAB is kind of very easy to uh, develop models, but what after that? Well, this is what it is doing. It is converting the algorithm into and giving you option to deploy in any of the formats which you are interested. So, uh, and, and 
you can also generate nice reports. I've just uh, mentioned here three types, PDF, HTML, Word, but you can convert this into, you know, even LaTeX or PPT. Okay, so uh, a bit on, on the infrastructure here. So what you saw is the web app, right? Now web app, it's running on uh, Apache Tomcat web server. Here, um, our MATLAB production server tool, it's a, another toolbox which runs, and it has the request breaking algorithm. It also does because you know what happens is that, as I said, multiple people are using your algorithm simultaneously with their set of inputs. So multiple requests will will fly in, and this algorithm automatically does the request breaking. And what you're doing is you're converting MATLAB a predictive model and keeping it, keep it in, in a centralized location. So this particular approach has various different advantages. These all are isolated. So what is happening is that the model what you have developed is available at centralized location, anyone can access. End user doesn't really bother with, uh, you know, or doesn't uh, get to know whether you have made any changes to your predictive model. Multiple models doing multiple different things can coexist okay and uh, MATLAB production server very well is connected with databases last but not the least these kinds of setups should be available 24 by 7 and needs high sort of accuracy so those protocols security protocols are also enabled if you want to learn more about it give a search at MATLAB production server and you will find more or just drop me an email as I said Okay, and this is the app which we have already seen in action. All right, um, bit on, on, on traffic monitoring, and I, I took this particular example um, because I wanted, you know, there were two objectives. One objective was kind of given you an introduction to IoT, what is IoT, and second one, more important, taking wise decisions on what runs on the edge device and what runs on the cloud okay so uh, this is this is by the way this is Bangalore and uh, it will be nicer if we have um, a signal management system which is automatically adjusting the signal timings based on the traffic okay so of course this is not fully um, uh, you know this is this conceptual way and then we have just implemented monitoring someone has to go ahead and implement full uh, signal timing system as well so how does it work or even even before that as I said objective was to introduce you to IOT so what is IOT IOT is kind of internet working of large number of embedded devices so-called things which are connected through internet right internet things IOT internet of things now these connected devices communicate with people and other things smart devices often provide sensor data to cloud and also cloud computing resources where data is processed analyzed and the cloud might be taking actions okay so this is how it looks these are your devices and it might be just continuously talking to the data aggregator on cloud or internet okay most important again is that we are developing these technologies for more comfort more convenience better performance increased safety and of course minimizing risk and that's why you know school vans you can actually see how your child is sitting in a school van or when you travel from Bangalore to Hyderabad or Mumbai to Pune, you know, a pop-up comes up. And if you're a Starbucks fan, okay, a pop-up comes up. Okay, down the line, two blocks, there is a, a, a Starbucks. Welcome to Mumbai. Devices are connect, connected to internet. And this is how the, the retail or these um, uh, chains are uh, increasing their business. Connecting. So there are endless opportunities. I just want to highlight one topic here. I mean, why now? Again, cheap computing power. So there is a tussle between Airtel and Geo, right? So prices have really come down, and we have 4G. 
So these are two reasons which I think which make IoT possible. Okay, so in our case, what we want, we want to have um, a system, you know, which is kind of uh, an algorithm which is running on the cloud and uh, controlling devices which is uh, on the field, in this case, signals. As I said, we have not built that, but we have built the first part where we have a sensor which is giving you information of, about the traffic. Now, uh, many of the time the question comes, um, all right, you know, when this cloud thing comes, there's a lot of web infrastructure needed. And I don't know anything about it. So for those folks, and even folks who have been, you know, developing and deploying their analytics for cloud, good news, there's something called ThingSpeak, which is, it's, it's a uh, new MathWorks web service hosted on AWS. It's, it's a data aggregator. It lets you collect, analyze, and act on the data from things such as Arduino, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBoard, and a number of other hardware. It already has 130,000 users worldwide. What does that mean? This is robust. At the same time, people must have tried something, and you have to just go and, and look at the examples which are freely available if you go to thingspeak.com. Okay? Last but not the least, it runs MATLAB code. And uh, I'm not gonna show that in live, but whatever MATLAB code you can program in MATLAB, if you wanna take it to cloud, you have to just copy and paste. Control C, Control V, that's about it, okay? So I'm just gonna show you application of it. So in this case, traffic monitoring, our objective is to measure, explore, discover traffic patterns and uh, provide live local traffic information. Now, I want to, you know, we're almost towards the end of this particular talk, but want to start this thought process in, in your head. Imagine that we want to build this kind of traffic monitoring system, and there are a thousand different cameras installed in various different places, uh, crossings in, in Pune, or in, um, I'm referring Pune because I'm sitting in Pune, right? Um, and um, these are monitoring traffic. And it is using a camera. There is a continuous video feed. Now, does it make sense that all these thousand cameras continuously capture the video feed and feed it on the cloud? It's gonna eat up all the bandwidth, correct? Doesn't make sense. So that's where you optimally decide what runs on the edge device. This is the edge device or edge node or the sensor, right? And what really runs on the cloud. In this case, what we want to cloud on the cloud is only number of vehicles. So we should have an algorithm which is running on the edge node, which is just looking at the you know uh, video feed and giving you number of cars at that particular time. Okay, so uh, this is a two-stage approach. First is prototype. You'll be, I'll be using here in this case, Simulink to develop logic and a camera feed. You don't even need anything else. You just need a historical feed and Simulink. Simulink is another uh, platform, block diagram kind of environment, which gives you access to various different blocks and what you're doing here is looking at the video feed first, then writing, you know, a, a MATLAB system. So what we're going to do here is kind of, you know, computer vision application where we'll be removing all the, all the background and detecting object in this car, moving cars. And towards then what we want is just the number. Okay, so just for your information, I'm also not an expert in image processing, but it uses something called blob analysis. Okay, and you see that here we have just the raw, uh, raw, uh, raw data, raw feed, and here we have those rectangles. If I, if I just take it forward, you see here we have rectangles. That means our algorithm is working fine, and um, you know uh, it has now from raw data, it has counted number of rectangles. All right, that's about it. Now, second stage is putting it on a 
hardware device and it could be any device in this case we just use the low cost device which is raspberry pi and we now need uh, a live feed live camera okay so raspberry pi is connected to a camera and we need to send this particular count to a cloud so we're going to use things peak now uh, they there are hardware support packages which if you are into this you know you will love it there is something called Simulink support package for, for Raspberry. You can just download that and those blocks will, will be available to you. Okay. Now what I need to do is I just need to copy the logic what we have developed in the first case. That's about it. In the first case, we had historical data and we were just counting number of rectangles. The logic was working fine. Now what we have is the real thing where data is coming from a camera and it has to go to ThingSpeak. The logic, these four blocks, what we have developed, just copy and paste. That's about it. And you see here, ThingSpeak right. So right from Simulink, it will directly connect to the cloud. Okay, this is also true for MATLAB if you are running that to, to, um, from MATLAB. And that's about it. So you have now a logic working, you know, which is sending the cloud. And what you see on the cloud, this is what you're interested in. When should I start for home? I don't know whether you have this question. I always have this question. You know, it will be really uh, nice if the system can tell me, all right, and this is what the traffic pattern in the evening from uh, four onwards, you know, it get, really get nasty, really get bad. So maybe avoid those hours, correct? And as I said, further this information can be uh, integrated with a signal uh, timing system. Okay, so this is a quick summary of developing smart devices. Uh, we are prototyping. In first case, creating algorithms, computer vision algorithms, object recognition algorithms, and those are again built in in, in MATLAB and Simulink. You don't have to build your own, number one. Uh, number two, it really connects with hardware, so you can easily get data from webcam or other sensors and, and then convert your logic into Raspberry Pi code, okay, C code. And that's again button click. Uh, process like we have seen in many other apps. Okay, so that's about it. Quick recap, you know, we have this analytics, as I said, which you can develop using MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB integrate really well with any kind of data. As I said, no, it, data could be coming from any of these databases, you know, uh, Mong uh, Mongo, SQL Server, any of the cloud stores, public uh, clouds, private clouds, or um, Kafka MQTT, right, those protocols. And uh, your analytics might be working. We have already seen in our case it was working, uh, working on, uh, on the cloud, uh, things speak, or, and also on the Raspberry Pi. But in business systems case, you can run on Tableau, Spotfire, or uh, any of the custom apps. Okay, so it is very tightly integrated once you have it. Uh, quick recap, this is what we saw. So there are four stages, building blocks of data analytics. You start with accessing data. You, you then pre-process it, get into dimensional reduction, look at the features which really matter for your kind of analysis model. Then you develop models. We also showed you how, how you can do a hyperparameter tuning and really make it sure that what model you have is the best model for your kind of data. Once the model has been validated, you can integrate that when, with any of the systems. It could be enterprise, it could be hardware. Okay. So my take, take, uh, key takeaways, MATLAB integrates you know, uh, and works very well with business and engineering data. You don't have to be a, uh, a data scientist to uh, you know, use or work on a data analytics project, anal analysis project, analytics project. And that's a different, again, discussion, what's the analysis and analytics. And uh, last but not the least, MATLAB analytics run everywhere, okay? I had promised you to leave you with, you know, a lot of good material. In my slides, I had already shown you various different help topics. So our documentation is really strong. I encourage, irrespective of use MATLAB or not, you know, go ahead and look at there 
uh, while working on the project, you can also build your knowledge, make it really strong. There are a few white papers available beyond Excel, the manager's guide to solving big data problems, or seven reasons how MATLAB is easier and more productive than Python. Okay, there are uh, hundreds of videos which are available and um, if you have signed up for uh, MathWorks newsletter, you'll be receiving all those nice articles. Uh, there is a series which we have, uh, which talks on, on deep learning. So uh, deep learning we did not cover today, but uh, in 11 lines of code, you can actually do deep learning. Okay, so encourage you to go ahead and watch that video. It's two minutes video. We also looked at very briefly uh, our ThingSpeak offering where you don't have to have a web infrastructure and still start developing your IoT solution. Okay, so you can develop analytics and put that analytics on the cloud uh, without reduplicating or rewriting any code. Just copy and paste. That's about it. Okay, so if you have any questions, this, these, these are my details. Drop me an email, amit.doshi at directmathworks.in. You can also look at my profile. I keep uh, uh, writing posts on analytics, so you can follow me there. I'll take a few questions. So what I'll do is I'll pause for um, a minute. And if there are any questions, uh, if they're there, I'll just you know come back in a minute's time. Okay, people people are asking whether we can get Uber data like this. Well, um, I I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, in this case, New York taxi data is kind of openly available, but there is a lot of data which is available in India. So if you go to RBI's website, a lot of, lot of data is available there. Um, and uh, uh, are there any tools for uh, data cleaning? Of course. So uh, uh, I'll encourage you to uh, look at the article which uh, which which talked about uh, cleaning messy and missing data. Okay. Uh, people are asking whether it's an open source tool. Of course, it's it's not an open source tool, but you can you can try it out. Uh, uh, trial is kind of free, and you can download uh, the entire trial. Uh, if you are a startup, you can definitely reach out to us. We have a different offering. Okay, and and as I said, no, uh, it's not just about open source or free. You know that I mean, you know that that's the only first uh, reason. But as I've already shown you, documentation, one single you know source or or a destination for all the uh, you know questions, guidance is the documentation and technical support is something. Uh, people ask for so many of the customers they used open source and they came back to uh, MATLAB these were two basic reasons you know first one was really strong documentation so they had you know they had uh, a trusted source for um, their projects second you know they had people whom they can reach out to and get the solutions really faster. So it's not only you know uh, big corporates who are using MATLAB, but even startups they have started using MATLAB because it really saves a lot of time. Okay, and uh, I'll encourage you to download this um, uh, uh, paper, white paper, which talks about seven reasons MATLAB is easier and and it, it talks about benchmarking. Okay, instead of saying that no MATLAB is better. It's it's better to go through benchmarking, where you'll see that to do same thing, you know, in Python, you will need more lines of code, and of course, the performance is really really fast. So I encourage you to do that for um, um, you know for MATLAB versus Python. There is similar white paper available on MATLAB versus R. Okay, um, so I guess I answered this question.
okay people are having questions on on slides so what I'll request you just drop me an email if you are interested in getting this slide uh, I'll definitely send those to you uh, the recording will be also available uh, for your usage afterwards where IOT there is another question where IOT is mostly used well I, I gave you two use cases you know uh, where these internet uh, connected things are getting getting used uh, I, I gave you example of school van where you can monitor what's happening in the in the van uh, while you are at work right they, that could be one example or for example ONGs your you know these these plants or a wind farm uh, the census could be these wind farms are really located in isolated places so if you don't make any changes you know it makes sense instead of reaching out to all these uh, plants if you can monitor what's happening and take action from far far distance that could be another example of, of IOT uh, what programming skills are, are needed so if you are a beginner what I'll, I'll you know suggest you is that you don't need to have just MATLAB that's about it if you know MATLAB you, you'll be uh, you'll be uh, developing your program and uh, IOT of course needs a data aggregator so you can copy paste the algorithm what you have written and directly put it on on ThingSpeak so uh, there is again nice article uh, or tutorials available on how to get started with ThingSpeak and it's free okay ThingSpeak is free so uh, encourage to uh, give a shot at it yes so there are many questions on on IOT and the repeated questions on uh, on slides so uh, I'll repeat so if you are interested in slides just drop me an email amit.doshi at the rate mathworks.n and um, I'll give you those slides and um, uh, Mehboob is asking you know um, she has been using uh, been using IOT since last year so how you can leverage this of course we need to see you know what is your application IOT application and how best we can help you out so reach out to us uh, there is you know there is uh, again uh, as I was saying you know subscribe to our uh, MathWorks newsletter there are nice blogs which are which are written by uh, one of our first employees Lauren so um, and she she talks about sentiment analysis, text analytics. So those things are also coming, you know, very slowly. Uh, those are also available. So I'll encourage you to go ahead and read those. Uh, it's called Art of MATLAB. Okay. Uh, again, the questions on on training. So definitely, I. Uh, there are trainings available so along with the videos and tutorial and documentation which is available freely there are instruct instructed late trainings which are available and um, if you are interested in you know getting two days or three days um, of training reach out to us um, we will we'll help you with uh, you know from the from the tool side and you can very well customize so if you have uh, eight or more number of people we can come down to your facility and train you and the training can very well be customized. Um, uh, so a list of hardware supported for edge analytics. Well, uh, yes, there is a list of hardware which we support and you can uh, use MATLAB coder to convert MATLAB algorithm into uh, your target platform. So the list is available on our website. okay so uh, thank you very much I'm sorry so if I have, if I have not answered any of your questions please drop me an email at the amit.doshi at mathworks.n if you have any feedback if you want to learn more understand more again reach out to me thank you very much for joining today's uh, webinar and uh, we really hope that you found it useful you learned at least something Thank you very much. Wish you a good evening ahead. Bye-bye.